Chief Navigator Felix's brow lowered as his eyes contracted, focusing his annoyance on the scanner in front of him. A chitinous limb exposed itself from the folds of his ceremonial robes, and a single digit unfurled. He rubbed at the dark smudge on the screen. It stubbornly remained. They had patrolled the Alethrax system, named for the commander of their flagship, the Ratellis, for seven days now. They had seen it all, and the disappointment of these meager planets had reached all the way back to the homeworld. Initial dossiers had sent a jolt through their entire species, an inherently stable system with a rich asteroid belt and three planets in the right place for all Commonwealth species. It would have been invaluable for the war effort if the three planets weren't all nightmarish wastelands. Alithrak II was a planet-sized pressure cooker. The probes they had sent down had lasted minutes. Four was a dry, airless world bearing the scars of relentless asteroid bombardment. And three was a hostile combination of both. Positive news was circulating about a few of the system's moons, but Felic wasn't impressed. The Commonwealth needed a hub, a manufacturing epicenter for the system. The current swath of backwater colonies was simply not enough. So why are we still here? asked Ethy from behind, as Felic almost jumped out of his carapace. Yeeth C, the leader of the ship's strike team, was good at sneaking up on people. Masi, Felic said. No more was needed. Simple enough. Alithrax briefing had the detail, but that's what it boils down to. Search and destroy. Well, I can't say that tactics failed me, replied Yeeth C, spreading his mandibles in a grin. Hey, Yeethy C said suddenly. What's that on your scanner? A mark, Felix said dismissively. I'll procure some cleaning. Uh, it's moving. Commander on the bridge, shouted Ethsi as he and the other soldiers snapped to attention. Alithrak emerged into the room and he was just as imposing as the Mahasi whispered. His sinewy frame reached eight feet easily, despite his hunch, and his gaunt face held eyes of fierce intelligence. What have we got? He asked as his subordinates scrambled to comply. A large object over a Lithrak II, Commander, in a very low but stable orbit, said Felic, and it's a dead reed across the board. We only spotted it against the bright clouds of the planet, said another. How large? a Lithrak inquired, just under 11 kilometers end to end. Which seems ordinary for a small natural satellite to me, Commander. What my colleague is failing to take into account is the shape, sir, said Felic. And what shape is it? It is, well the first analyst trailed off. Ship shaped. Alithrak nodded slowly, considering the situation. Notify all ships. The Sivoran is to take point for a clean scan, whilst the Fexus and the Doem plot firing solutions. The bridge erupted in the clacking of keys and mandibles as orders were issued and followed. Alithrak turned to leave, pausing briefly by the door. Captain Ethsi, make your preparations. Absolutely, sir. Three, two, one. Firing. Probe fired. Silence loomed over the bridge of the Ratellis as glowing rear of the probe flashed briefly into view. It vanished into the void, but the tracking locator remained to give a steady reeds of distance and speed. The fleet was observing from behind the third planet, spread into a tenuous skirmish formation. Watching it with particular interest was Captain Ithy C and his strike team from a small monitor in the armory. If the probe was successful, then they could well be the follow-up. Fifteen! Ten kilometers! Five! Impact! Yeethy C had his eyes closed as he imagined the probe coming in like a kinetic round. The flash of raw heat on impact and the immense shudder which would ring through an entire ship. The spray of debris into space and the red-hot hole in the side. Impact confirmed! Breach? asked Alithrak urgently. The probe's handler hesitated. Did we breach? Affirmative. We're in. Probe is damaged, but we have a signal. Display on main. The bridge darkened as a rotating icon appeared cheerfully against the window. Gravimeter on, said the handler as a messy stream of data occupied the top left corner of the projection. Thermals on, was the confirmation as the second quarter came online. Some white patches from the impact, but otherwise solid gray. No heat. GPR on. Blurry schematics started to appear in slices in the third quarter. Visual on. As the fourth panel came online, a Lithrak craned to see, stretching to his full height of over nine feet. His subordinates didn't even notice him, so drawn were they to the monitor. In the armory, an auto rifle fall freely to the ground and nobody even blinked. What are they? 
How many are there? Are they alive? Endless questions were cast from every corner of Alithrax's fleet as the same image from the probe was held in every mind. The picture had already been smuggled off of the military network and onto the Commonwealth net. It had already been recognized as a hoax, as the apocalypse, and as everything in between by the so-called experts back home. Alithrax stared at the same image in his quarters in endless awe. There were pods, hundreds of thousands of them in a vast cylindrical chamber, with as many as eight such chambers mapped out on the GPR scan. In the foreground, every detail was visible on a single pod, including, most importantly, a nude gray figure suspended in a stagnant fluid. Alithrak couldn't gauge its size from this perspective, but he already had a team of scientists studying the images. He was fascinated by the mane of thick fur at the top of the otherwise hairless creature. It had the musculature of a young Mahasi, but its skin was pale and dotted with black and silver sockets. Alithrak had made up his mind. He left his quarters and strode straight into the armory, garnering a reflexive salute from a surprised Ithi Sea. Soldiers of the Ratelli strike force! You will soon be launched through space, through someone's hull, and into history. You are tasked with recovering a specimen from the ship, and if the entire species is not dead, you will be the conduit for our ambassadors to establish first contact. You mean, sir, that even if they are alive, we should still secure the specimen? Correct, Captain Yeath C. We will have an alien to study, whether dead or alive. Ten minutes to prepare. Breaching. Breach confirmed came the satisfied call of the lead gunner on board the Ratellis. His ordnance this time was jokingly referred to as Live Ammo, an assault shuttle bearing two teams of Commonwealth Special Forces. Approximately two kilometers away from the target, a charge in the midsection would detonate, accelerating an exploding nose to make a breach as the rear half followed through with the troops. Captain ITC, this is Ratellis Control. Do you read? We read you. Deployment successful. We've established a perimeter, nothing unexpected so far. He's good, said Alithrak, brimming with confidence. YTC and his two teams had deployed into a large room, which their GPR schematic showed was just above another large chamber. Air, heat, and gravity were all offline, but their combat suits could handle that. YTC could hear his troops over open microphones, and nothing else but the rhythmic clunking of his magnetic footsteps reverberating through the suit. Team one front and center, he barked as he gestured towards a door. I want this open. With a grunt of confirmation, two troops moved forwards as others covered the door. One drew a breaching plate and clamped it to the front of his rifle as another scanned the door with a handheld device. Right here, said the one with the scanner, tapping the middle of the door as his colleague raised his weapon and pushed the breaching plate against it. Breaching, came the call as the locking mechanism exploded into the next room. Wythe C was already in with a crowbar, and the door was quickly opened. They descended a short set of stairs and were confronted with another door. This one, however, seemed to read their intent and opened itself in silence. Control, announced Eeth C. Looks like bits of this thing still have power. Just how old is it? The science team is working on that, Captain. Current best guess is a couple thousand years at least. Control, be honest with me here. Do we have any idea who built this? Asked Ethy C. Negative, Captain. But given the size of this thing, we're hoping that they're dead or friendly. Dead or friendly, said Ethy C under his breath. The team relaxed a little as they moved through the next few rooms. The inside of the alien ship was a complete mess, but they didn't see any signs of battle. Eventually, they found a large round opening which they knew would lead into the pod array. They walked through in a wedge formation and emerged in the cylindrical chamber onto a catwalk that spanned the entire length of it. The individual pods were larger than the images had suggested, and Ethy C walked up to one of them, as if hypnotized. An alien floated in the pod before him, just like the one in the image. Two arms, two legs, one head. I was hoping for something more interesting cracked one of his troops. Ugly fuckers, though, replied another. Yithi C seemed satisfied with the specimen in front of him. Control, he called in. Please ask Commander Alithrak if this particular alien would be sufficient. One moment, please. The squad's technician stepped forward, casually removing the front panel of the pod's console. He poked around inside with a little light. Shit, he said. This whole damn system is, well, it's alien. 
You can't hack it? Short answer, no. Long answer, I'd love to get this back to the Ratellis and try. Let's see, said the technician as he started experimenting with the keyboard. An interface flickered into life, presenting a menu in the alien language. Just one option, so I'm guessing that's release. Let's find out. With a quiet whir, the console burst into activity, throwing up alien text as beeps and whirs came through. A speaker behind them made a cheerful ding as the large round exit slammed shut. Atmosphere began to rush back into the chamber, thick yet colorless. Less oxygen than would be considered optimal in the Commonwealth, but perfectly breathable. Captain, this is control. What the hell is going on down there? We, uh, I think we turned it on. Lights were coming on everywhere, and the vibrations of heavy machinery could be felt through the catwalk. An alarm sounded within the alien pod, and the dirty, viscous fluid was drained in seconds. It cracked open, globs of liquid floating through the massive chamber. Quick, before the gravity comes on, yelled Ethuk. Control, we have the alien. I think it's alive. We need a pressurized route out of here. No pressure to any of the adjacent rooms, Captain. Wait, the LZ is above you. Go up. Gimme that, shouted Eeth C as he snatched an anti-tank weapon from the leader of Team Two. He aimed upwards and fired, blasting a large hole through the ceiling. Mag boots off, let's go! With two of them clutching the alien, they jumped in unison, emerging not far from their landing zone. Clambering aboard the shuttle, the team strapped in and sealed the door. Form a damn line! Medics, engineers, scientists, everybody else. In that order, you grubs. The clamor surrounding the shuttle back on board the Ratellis was intense as personnel surrounded the returning raiders. I don't know what you did down there, yelled Alithrak as he strode towards Eeth C. But it's active and I am hoping that it's not pissed off. Commander, said one of the analysts feebly. Not now, replied Alithrak as he turned his attention back to Eeth C. Captain, I've got 15,000 crewmen in this fleet here cleaning shit out their robes because you turned something on. You got any idea how loud I had to shout to stop those assholes on the Fexus from putting holes in it? Yes, said Yeath C. Commander, tried the analyst again. Did you get the damn specimen at least? Yeah, we did. A stretcher emerged from the assault shuttle bearing the unconscious alien. This stunned the crowd into silence. Everyone except one determined analyst. Commander, look at this the analyst demanded quietly, passing a data pad with the now famous pod image on it. Yeah, the pods. Welcome to three hours ago, now get- Yes, the pods, replied the analyst patiently. Look. Alithrak did look, and when he saw it, it was like a slap in the face. This was not the original image. This was the probe's live feed. The same room from the same angle, with the same countless pods. Except that they were empty. Within minutes, the alien was situated in the laboratory with a horde of scientists taking samples. The rest of the crew were scrambling for their battle stations as their potential target, the behemoth alien ship, poured incredible force from its engines and broke the gravity well of the second planet as if it were a paper chain. Incoming broadcast, text only, shouted the communications officer above the chaos. With a nod from a lithrak, the message was brought up on several screens. It was a short one. They seem to have guessed the structure of our language and have provided suggestions for us regarding translation. Good. That's good, right? Queried Felic. If they wanted to destroy us, then they wouldn't care if we read it or not, right? How long to translate? Asked Alithrak. Not long, they've done most of it for us. They must have been monitoring Captain Ethy C's communications. The first word reads, attention interlopers. Not a good start, said Felic. Power to weapon capacitors, commanded Alithrak. Right, it reads, attention interlopers, Earth stands today as a withered husk of what it should be. We were judged and found wanting by forces far beyond us, but there was survival amidst the destruction. There was learning amongst the chaos, and finally, from within anger and hatred and fear, came retribution. Earth stands today as a monument to our survival, for there is far less remaining of their homeworld. We do not care that ours is a dead world. It is ours by rights and we shall hold it. We do not care that we are a doomed species. We shall survive and learn against the malevolence of all others and of the universe itself. The human remnant marches forward with not one left behind. Incoming! Alithrak's first reaction was one of relief. Had their main gun fired then, they wouldn't have had any notice. What have we got? 
His question was answered by a resounding wham as something slammed into the side of the Ritellis. The Fexus had opened fire at the first human capacitor surge, and the Doem had now joined it. The two heavy cruisers were moving to shield their flagship as an array of destroyers and corvettes fanned out. These would form a missile shield for the larger vessels with their point defense systems, and in turn, they would soon launch missiles of their own. Slug? Charge? What the fuck just hit us? Minimal damage, sir, said the chief engineer, apparently surprised. It slowed rapidly just before impact. Wait, started Eth C, still in his combat suit. It's a fucking assault. Surge! Incoming! Warning screamed urgently as a small, silent flash came from the human ship. The battle icon of the Fexus winked out. Are we hit? The Fexus! Crewmen swarmed to the view screen to see the front of the Fexus burning. The fireball mushroomed from the front of the ship as the atmosphere inside combusted. The human slug had torn an opening along the vessel's length. Survivors would remain in outer armories and hangars, but the ship was lost. Alethrak had been stunned into silence. We need to fall back, yelled Felic. There's another problem, countered Ithsi. Intruders in the main hangar. Stop them, ordered Alethrak to Ithsi, his control over this situation draining with every second. With a muffled ding, the door opened. Ithsi moved through. With him was the 12-man strike team he had taken aboard the human ship. Another 200 soldiers had armed up and would soon move in through the main door. The corner of the hangar was twisted and charred, with the open nose of a human assault pod poking through. It was far larger than the covert shuttles used by the Commonwealth, and so too were its occupants. Four humans had already disgorged from the pod and taken position in the hangar. They looked very different to the specimen Yithi C had retrieved. Gone was the flesh and hair, and instead stood a gray mountain of armor and equipment. Although silent, the towering figures had their attention focused on just one of their number. Officer. Yithi C raised his weapon, took aim, and fired. He watched in dismay as the round plinked against the human's head and failed to penetrate. It turned. Get down! yelled Yith C as one of the humans stepped forwards, holding a multi-barreled weapon from the hip. It spun to life as Yith C hit the deck, and then it loosed a long burst of pure hell towards the Commonwealth squad. Exploding rounds hammered into the Team 2 leader as his mutilated body collapsed. Another burst forced I.T.C. and his men to duck and run, returning only a few shots as they retreated to the door. The four humans advanced, pouring suppressive fire into Ithsi's position. Two humans flanked rapidly, standing between Ithsi's squad and the main hangar doors as the other two continued to suppress. Two more of the Commonwealth soldiers were shot at close range, and Yithi C heard them expire over the open microphones. Just in time, his reinforcements arrived as the main hangar doors whirred open to reveal two companies of ground troops. The first two humans, now themselves outflanked, simply turned and fired. Commander, we've lost contact with Captain Yithi C. Have his reinforcements arrived? They arrived at the hangar, and we seem to have lost contact with them, too. We have four alien signatures moving towards the science wing. Four? Where are the rest of them? We don't know. Lock it down, lock everything down. Have the Betka send us more ground troops. Use a fucking assault shuttle if we have to. We need to stop those intruders. The next ten minutes passed in near silence, save for the steady pings of computers tracking the exchange of fire in space. The dome had fallen back after taking a glancing hit, and soon after the human vessel had stopped firing its main weapon. It was now plugging casually at the smaller vessels with its secondary guns, and had yet to score a serious hit. Sir, they've breached the science wing and are converging on the alien. Is the science team alive? Yes, apparently they ran and the humans neither fired nor pursued. His enemy honored surrender or at least recognized civilians. The silver lining on a particularly gruesome cloud thought Alethrak. Do we have working cameras in the science wing? Displaying on main. Four figures, armored and invincible, stood around the naked alien. One put down a huge case it had been carrying on its back as two others used some sort of scanner on the alien. It stirred. From inside the case came another armored suit, with the boarding party helping the fifth human get dressed. The leader of the human assault team then turned to look straight at the ceiling camera. For a second, Alithrak doubted that the viewing was one way. Incoming broadcast from inside our ship. It's audio. It was spoken crudely in Commonwealth, but they recognized it instantly as it filled the bridge. 
not one left behind. 